Hi there. Here's a teaser of your tailored lesson plan as a Spanish native speaker. As a preview, we've selected our top seven most common pronunciation challenges. Let's listen to them right now. Here's a clip of Javier Bardem in an interview in 2018. As you listen to him speak, I want you to pay attention to three words. Hello, face, and kicking. Let's listen. Like, hey, hello, how are you? Something like that. And all of a sudden, I went out, and they tap on my shoulder. I, I turn, and this guy punched me in the face, and they had fun with my face for a good 30 minutes. Oh, my the God. The four of them. Like outside kick, the bar. Yeah, kicking and er doing everything. Let's dig into that. Challenge sound number one is the pronunciation of H spellings. In the first word, hello, when he makes the first consonant, you can hear some contact between the back of his tongue and the roof of his mouth. It's the same sound he makes in hi and how are you? The majority of American English speakers, though, will use a different sound. And this can be challenging as it sounds similar to a sound in Spanish, but is made differently. In our lessons, you'll learn to differentiate between the sound and the or the sounds and apply the desired H in practical conversation. Challenge sound number two is the pronunciation of diphthongs, which means a slide between two vowel sounds. For the word face, Javier slides from E to E, so it sounds like A. You can hear it in his multiple uses of the word face. Most American English speakers will use a different slide from e to e. A face versus face. Hear a difference? If not, that's okay. This is a phenomenon called phonemic awareness. If your brain has never needed to differentiate between these sounds, then as a result, it doesn't prioritize their distinction. Our lessons will train your body to feel the difference between sounds so that your ear gains the ability to hear the difference. Challenge sound number three is how to distinguish between nasal sounds. In the word kicking, Javier uses the nasal consonant mm, at the end of the word. And this uses the front of the tongue. You can hear it in his kicking and everything. For the majority of English pronunciations, the NG spelling is made using the back of the tongue. Mm. The difference is subtle. Mm versus mm. But as you'll learn, it can make a huge impact on the clarity of your English. Now, Let's listen to a speaker from Latin America. This is Mexican actress Salma Hayek. And as you listen, pay attention to just these three words, trip, love, and basket. Um, I wanted to take a special trip with my daughter, uh -huh. just mommy and daughter, and sure. I took her to Morocco, How cool are which you? I love. And um, I've never been in a hot air balloon, and so we had breakfast uh, in the in the little basket in the hot air balloon. So let's take a deeper look. Challenge sound number four is navigating the molar R. In the word trip, there's a consonant cluster of a T spelling and an R spelling, which Selma pronounces as trip. A majority of English speakers will realize this sound with a trip or a trip. Can you hear the difference? Trip versus trip. This will be a big point to focus on and will make your pronunciation that much clearer to an English speaking audience. Challenge sound number five is what to do when you come across an O spelling. The spelling rules are not always reliable when it comes to English pronunciation, and this is especially tricky with O spellings and something that you can only achieve by building your phonemic awareness and muscle memory. In the word love, Salma realizes the O spelling as O, love. But 
This word is pronounced by American English speakers with an uh, love. This is a vowel which is often found in American pronunciation and can make a huge impact on your audience. You'll learn more about it in your strut vowel lesson. Challenge sound number six is the ah sound. This sound is not present in Spanish and as a result can be substituted for many other sounds. Selma pronounces it as ah in basket. But in your lesson, you'll learn exactly how to create an ah sound to be able to pronounce it as basket. Finally, challenge sound number seven is the distinction between e and e. English spelling has no rules for when to apply these two sounds, and as a result, it's easy to confuse the two. You can hear it in Javier's pronunciation of killing as killing, and in Salma's pronunciation of little as little. Not to worry, there's a lesson that breaks this down and gives you plenty of chances to explore the differences between the two pronunciations. There's a lot of information to cover, and this will be a long process, but I'm here to tell you that practice makes progress. Just listen to Mexican actress Isa Gonzalez. She excels at all seven focus features, and I'm going to point out just three. Listen closely to these words, that, trademark, and silly. I don't even know what that means. Meaning like my trademark, like do I have a mole? Or like my trademark is that I am Silly, like I don't even know what that means. She absolutely hits the ah sound in that for a successful challenge sound number six. Then you can hear her slide from e eh to i eh in trade, trademark, a perfect challenge sound number two. And she also navigates that molar r in mark for a perfect challenge sound number four. Finally, she has two different vowels in the word silly. The first is i, the second is e, distinguishing between those two phonemes for a solid challenge sound number seven. All this to say, these changes are possible. With practice and the right instruction, you too can achieve them in your speech. So let's get started. <laughs>